So in this uh, video, we're going to look at uh, systems of uh, nonlinear equations. So um, if you remember, we've already done uh, uh, the solutions for nonlinear equations, which is basically um, the method, the methods we looked at in the in the previous videos. In the first actual video on this topic, uh, on the topic of solving equations, we started with, if you remember. Uh, uh, Newton's method. Okay, so Newton's method, if uh, you'll recall, uh, was basically looking at uh, equations. So basically, what we were looking at is we have an equation f x equals zero, and we want to solve this equation. And it could be anything. It would be sine x, cos x, any c combination of functions just is equal to zero. And the method of solution we looked at was that x n plus one equals x n. Uh, it's an iterative method. And it's just a function f at xn divided by f dash xn. And basically, we're looking for the x's which satisfy uh, this uh, basic equation. So that was Newton's method. Now, then after that, we've looked at, of course, systems of equations. And a system of equation, remember, means when you're solving simultaneous equations. So, so we've been looking at, for instance, simultaneous equations, so two or more. Uh, basically equations form a system of equations now in this particular topic here we're looking at systems of nonlinear equations so basically what we are going to be doing is instead of you know these types of equations we're looking at a combination of a bunch of these types of equations forming a system so that means that we're not going to be looking at just one function but we're going to say well f1 x equals 0 f2 x uh, uh, equals zero and so on and so on up to some function fn equal to zero so we're going to look at a bunch of uh, nonlinear equations so what do these equations actually look like example would be for instance now instead of x plus y we might be looking at x squared plus y squared equals four and another equation could be with it x minus y equals seven now we are going to limit our we are going to limit ourselves to just a system of nonlinear nonlinear algebraic equations. Okay. So we're going to limit ourselves to nonlinear nonlinear algebraic equations. Because if we say nonlinear generally, that could mean anything. So for the to limit ourselves, we're going to just be looking at a method that actually looks at and we're going to consider looking at nonlinear algebraic equations. So this would be a good example of that, okay, is you have uh, some uh, x squared plus y squared or x cubed plus y cubed and so on and so forth, and they've got a right hand side. Now, of course, um, it's very, these equations, another thing we need to keep in mind is this is how we were looking at the equations. We're now going to try to do the following, which is we're going to rewrite this as x squared plus y squared minus 4 equals 0, okay? So that and this one, for instance, would be similarly x minus y minus 7, okay, equals 0. So uh, if you look at this, that's the kind of, that's what we mean by uh, systems of nonlinear equations. Okay. So here's just uh, things a little bit cleaned up now. So basically you can see there's your, uh, so f is a vector now, uh, okay, here. f is a vector and basically... Uh, f here, uh, this is what I was talking about, the f1, f2, which are functions of uh, different variables, x1, x2, up to xn. Uh, the x vector here shows you the number of variables you have, like in the example I had an x and a y, so that's just a two variable, two function uh, system. So here you have n functions, and you've got, of course, n variables uh, that these, these functions seem to be depending on. So as we put uh, things together, basically uh, to look at some notation, now it's going to be vector functions. So these vector functions equal to zero vector. So the zero on this side that you see, this is the zero vector, essentially. And f here is basically got this structure on it. So that's what, uh, so that's what we're formally talking about. So how does one solve this? Well, let me just uh, uh, on the side here show you um, uh, remind you again, which I did just before, that we looked at, of course, uh, Newton's method. And Newton's method, uh, again, uh, 
Now that was Newton's method. So in this case, if we were to implement Newton's method, so the vector version of this could possibly be, for instance, so I'll have the vector uh, x, n plus one, where vector x is uh, this vector here. Now that's going to be equal to the vector xn. So at step xn plus one equals step xn, but it's a vector now I'm looking at. That's not a problem. So far, so good. And we look at the vector function at the step vector xn. Now that all looks fine. The problem is, is this, uh, this division uh, by f dash. Now what is f dash? Now remember, we're talking about vectors. First of all, vectors and, and matrices, the concept of division is not the same as uh, division here with the something over something. We can't do that. So what is the equivalent of uh, division is actually the inverse. So we're looking at, basically we want to figure out first of all, what is a vector containing the derivatives of the function f, something. And it's, it's exactly there where we introduce now the concept of something called the Jacobian. Now you might have seen this before when you studied vector functions perhaps, but uh, the concept is very straightforward. Uh, let me just show you what we are really talking about. So this would, this would go on down all the way up to the nth function. Okay, x1 and then fx uh, n, f, sorry, uh, fn divided by x2, x2, and then all the way to fn x, uh, sorry, xn. So that, this uh, rather, this matrix, this is called the Jacobian. This is called the Jacobian. So the Jacobian is something that basically represents the equivalent of the derivative that we had in Newton's method. So let's clean this up a little bit and uh, uh, look at what happens next. Okay, so here's the Jacobian matrix just cleaned up a little bit. Um, and now what remains is how do we incorporate that basically into uh, for instance, here, as you looked at, this was the, this is Newton's method. So uh, we have this f dash x. How to, so obviously, one thing that occurs to quickly to mind is that we're going to take the inverse of this matrix. Okay, if that's the Jacobian, that's the derivative. Then if I take the um, uh, the inverse of this matrix and multiply it into this, so what I'm saying is something like the j, uh, j inverse. So if I were to multiply this uh, by J inverse at, of course, Xn, uh, which, was a, which is a matrix, of course, and put that here, okay, because I can't put it here. So if I put that here, no. So if I put that here somehow, then I should be able to, in fact, have, an, have, a, have a Newton's method, uh, a systems version of solve systems of equations. Let's just look at this in a little bit more detail now. So basically this method works uh, reasonably well. The only thing we need to now know is uh, we need an, of course, an initial guess. And the initial guess, uh, of course, as usual, is a vector. And this time it's gonna be in the form of a vector. So we're gonna need, for instance, we, we call, we would refer to that as uh, uh, x, uh, the zeroth step. Now, um, one thing I would point out is if you remember now, although we have this inverse and it all looks very good, but remember what we've learned so far from solving linear systems is that uh, that is not a great idea. We should not have the inverse because it's extremely difficult and uh, not difficult, but it's very expensive to calculate. So instead of this, what we can do is just rearrange the equation and we actually, so if we rearrange the equation, we, we end up with this uh, basically equation where this delta x of k is just the difference between xk plus one and xk in fact. So uh, let me write that. So where uh, delta xk is just xk plus one minus xk that you see here. So just take that to the other side, multiply across by the j inverse, a uh, j inverse which becomes j, uh, bo multiply both sides, sorry, by j, and you end up with this. So delta xk has just cleaned up things a little bit, is just xk plus one minus xk. So let's, uh, we're now in a position to start looking at some examples.
So here's an example. This is what typically what we would have. Uh, we've got a second equation you see is nonlinear clearly. So uh, we want to solve the system of equations for the variables x1 and x2. So the first step, of course, would be to calculate the, the Jacobian in this case. So uh, that would mean that in the Jacobian, remember, uh, just let me show you that. So the Jacobian of this matrix here, of course, it would mean that, and then the derivative of F1 with respect to X2, which is two, uh, and then for F2, the derivative of X1 squared, uh, F2, sorry, with respect to X1, which is gonna give me two X1, and then the derivative of this uh, whole thing with respect to X2. So that's gonna be zero, and that's gonna be just two X2 times four, which is eight X2. And of course, remember four is a constant, so there's no, uh, uh, it's just going to be zero. So we end up with this uh, Jacobian. So there, uh, just uh, uh, that's the Jacobian. So in this case, for this particular matrix, as you see, one, two, two x one, and eight x two. Now we'll start the. Uh, now we'll just set up our iterative process to start. So to start the iterative process, as you know, first thing we need is a, an initial guess. So we'll use this initial guess here: x of zero equals one two. So that means x one is one and x2 uh, is two. So just let me indicate that here. That's x1 and this here is x2. Sorry, uh, so if I can just come back here and let's let's look at this. This is the uh, iterative process that we're working with. So, so now we've got our initial guess. Uh, let's look at uh, x uh, of z, uh, j, the Jacobian, okay, of x, of zero. So what's that going to be? Okay, so if we calculate the Jacobian at the initial get x zero, that means x one is one. First of all, these are just constants here, so that will just be one and that will be two, they don't change. Now two times x one, x one is one, so that will be two times one, which is two. And then you'll have eight times x two and x two is two, so that will be 16. So that will give us basically uh, the Jacobian. Now, next, so if we look here, now we've got the Jacobian at x0. Now, uh, the next thing we need is this uh, f at x0. So let's do that. So now f, of course, is here, as you see. And what we're going to do is substitute for x1, 1, and x2 uh, is going to be 2. And we're going to substitute these values in here. So that means that. Uh, that means that we'll have f at x0, okay, and that's going to be equal to, so first it's going to be x1, which is 1, plus uh, 2x2, that's 4, minus 2, and then we'll have, of course, uh, x1 is 1 squared, so it's 1, plus 4 times x2 squared, which is 4 fourths. Remember, this compare this to the system, ax equals b. Now we've got B, our B is this here, okay? And our A, uh, okay, and our A is this over here. So that just leaves, basically, uh, the, uh, the uh, sorry, this here, which will be our X, okay? So we're gonna solve for this, so we're gonna solve for this, and then we'll calculate uh, our next iterate, which is X1. So, I hope you understand that. So let's proceed. So here's uh, everything just written for you all together. As you see, uh, these are just the Jacobian and this uh, f of at x0. And of course, it's negative here, as you see, minus. So that they'll say minus 3 and minus 13. So the, that's basically now our equation that we want to solve using Gaussian elimination. So we'll use Gaussian elimination to solve this for delta x0 next. We apply Gaussian elimination, it gives us 1, 2, 0, 12, and then uh, on the other side, minus 3, 7. So when we solve it, we get this uh, result. Now, so I just have rewritten it down here for you. So you can see uh, this is what we're doing. So now for in our case, of course, uh, so delta x 0, uh, which we already have. So basically what we're saying is that x1, so x1, okay is going to be of course the delta x zero that we have so it'll be delta x zero okay and plus x zero 
Okay, so now we already have delta x zero. It's uh, minus 22 over 12 and seven over 12. So, okay, and then plus we add that, the initial guess to that, which we are using is one, two, and that gives us, of course, the final here. So that gives us minus 10 over 12 and 17 over 12. So we've got our now, the first iteration. So you see, it's sort of done in two steps. In the first step, we calculate delta x zero using Gaussian elimination uh, as done here. And then we calculate uh, x one, in fact, and that's the update. Now that we have x one, we can proceed to calculate the next, uh, the Jacobian at x one and the, and the function at x one, just like we did uh, here, as you saw here uh, at x zero. So now we'll have x one. So this, this will be a new matrix. Our function at x one will get updated. And then of course, we'll go through the same process, calculate delta x again. And, and that's basically how this works. So let's just put everything together again. So here's just uh, written down. So x1, uh, basically, there it is. And of course, next. So just here, I'm showing you the uh, the next iteration. So f of x1, some of the ingredients for it. So f of x1. And then we have, of course, that at uh, x1, x2, uh, the, the, the first iterate now, the updated one. So we are using these values, minus 0.83 and 1.42. That gives us these two. So the Jacobian at that then gives us this matrix. So basically, um, and delta x1 is 0 0.64, 0 0.32, and of course we then calculate x2, which is equal to uh, x1, delta x1, and of course here I'm talking about vectors. Uh, we're still talking about vectors here. These are not single numbers, of course. Um, so anyway, that gives us this updated x2 vector, and the second iteration, and we can continue this way until we reach the correct root, which is actually 0, 1. So this hope, uh, hopefully this example demonstrates to you how the uh, system of nonlinear equations, how a system of nonlinear algebraic equations can be solved using Newton's method adopted, adapted, sorry, for uh, systems of nonlinear equations. So final thoughts uh, on this before we end. Important thing to understand is that the Jacobian matrix that we're calculating here requires approximately n squared function evaluations. And that's quite expensive. This makes this method quite expensive. One can actually show that, in fact, this the overall number of steps requires, required is n cubed, in fact. Number of operations required is n cubed, which is quite expensive, in fact. Now, um, this some of the expense can be cut down by using a, uh, a, uh, a version of the secant method, which we used uh, if you remember earlier in this, and uh, in, in for the uh, one-dimensional problems or single equations, uh, so the secant method was basically sidestepping the calculation of the derivative. It's an approximation of the derivative. That can be considered, and it may lead to a slightly altered method, which may be a little less expensive uh, to calculate. Anyway, uh, with that, we will stop uh, this uh, video, and I hope that you understand how the Newton's method extended to um, n-dimensional, or uh, sorry, a system of n equations and nonlinear algebraic equations can be employed.